Okay, folks, here's another instalment for you. We're coming up to the last couple of episodes now. Thank God. Um, so let's get stuck in. We're on chapter 37. A.N. Okay, everybody, I'm going on vocation on the 1st of July, so I'm either going to end the fic or up that in the next weeks. Thanks. Oh, and prep, start flaming the story. Raven, thanks for the help. See a girl after vocation. Darko's point of view. Lol. Vampire and I chaired Hagrid to the floor. Oh, my fucking Satan, Enemy said. She was so hot. Maybe I could use amnesia portion to make Satan fall in love with me faster. But you're so sexy and wonderful anyway, Tartar, said Vampire. Why would you need it? To make everything go faster, lol, said Enneby. But you don't have to do it with him or anything, will you? I asked jealously. OMFG, you guys are so scary, said Brittany, a fucking prep. Shut the fuck up, said Willow. Oh, well, anyway, let's go to Professor Trevelry's room. Draco, Ebery, and I went to Professor S Senator's room, but Professor Sinister wasn't there. Instead, Tom Ridd was. Oh, hi, fuckers, he said. Listen, I got some cool new clothes. He took out the clothes from the bag. It was a gothic black leather miniskirt that said 666 on the black. Black Stilton boots, blood red fishnets, and black corset. OMG fangs, I said, and hugged him in a gothic way. I took the clothes in the bag. Okay, Professor Sinister isn't hers. What the fuck should we do? Asked Draco. Suddenly, he looked at a sign on the black wall. Oh my fucking Satan, I screamed as I read it. On it, everyone, Professor Sinister is away. She's too gothic, and she's in as Corbian now. Glassy shall be taught by Dumbledore, who is back, but he shall not be the principal for now. Sincerely, Professor Rumbridge. OMFG! I shot it out ongly. How could they do that? Some Suddenly, Dumbledore came in. What the hell are you doing in my office? He began to shoot angrily. Suddenly, I saw Morty McFly's black tin machine. I jumped seductively into it and leaving Draco and Vampire. Suddenly, I was back in Tim. I looked around. It was Professor Slutbone's effice. I sneaked around. Suddenly I saw the amnesia potion on his desk. It was black with blood red pentagrams in it. It was the shape of a cross. I put it in my pocket. Suddenly the door opened. It was... Professor Slotgorn! OMG, what are you doing, fucker? He shouted angrily. I don't know what the fuck you're doing, I shouted angrily. Oh, sorry, I was just looking around because I thought it was class. You said, finally hoping he couldn't see the potion in your pocket. Oh, okay, you can go now, said Professor Slotbourne. You went to the common room after putting on my clothes. Silas, Samaro and Snap were there practicing Vampires Will Never Hurt You by MCR. Oh, hi, you guys, I said seductively. Where's Satan? Oh, he's coming, said Sirius. BTW, you can call me Hades now. Suddenly... Satan came. He was wearing smexy black leather jackson, black congress shoes, a slipknot t-shirt and black tie. Okay, I will see you guys at the concert, I said, and then I went with Satan. <laughs> oh dear, Professor Slotborn. There's still the black, Morty McFly's black time machine. What happened to the time turner, people? Really, what happened to the time turner? Please. This is turning out to be a multi fandom nightmare. As Corbian. Oh dear, never mind. Okay. Chapter 38 AM. What does everyone think if I end the story, then add some more? to it after vocation oh yeah and prep stop flaming it if you don't like the story then take my quiz okay Th then we'll see if you're gothic or not <laughs> that's barely readable 
Satan and I walked to his car. It was black car with pentagrams all over it. On the license plate said 666 just like Draco's car. I went in it seductively. Stan started to drive it. We talked about Satanism. Lols, he was named after Satan. Cutting, music and being gothic. Oh my Satan, Gerard is so fucking hot. Volksamort agreed as he smoked some weed. Cause bye guys are uh, hot, they're so sensitive, I love them. Lol goes, fucks a, a bye guy. <laughs> Lol, I totally decided not to commit suicide when I heard Helena. I said in a flirty voice. Hey Satan, do you know, you know the cure for when people are addicted to... Volksamort serum. Well, he thought, I think you have to drink vampire blood. Suddenly, Volksamort parked the car behind a black movie theatre. Satan and I walked outside. We went into the movie together and they were showing The Exorcist. In it, a boy and a girl were doing it and suddenly a serial killer came. Lol. Satan and I laughed at the blood because we're sadists. While Satan was watching the movie, I had an idea. I took Satan's gothic black nightmare before Christmas cigar sexually from his pocket and put some amnesia portion in it. I put it back in his black Emily Strange bag. Satan turned around and started to smoke it. Black clouds with red pentagrams in them started to fly around everywhere. OMG, Satan said, jumping up. I gasped because I was afraid he'd notice. Enemy, guess what? I knew the amnesia had worked. Amnesia potion has not been invented yet, so it will not work, he said. Too bad, because I wanted to use some on you. Cool. I uh, raised my eyes suggestively, and then... He took off my clothes sexily, and we started to make out. I took off his shit. He had a sex pack, just like Gerard Way. We Frenched. Excuse me, but you're going to have to leave shooting the lady behind because she was a prep. Fuck you, I said. Suddenly, I attacked her, sucking all the blood. No, she screamed. All the preps in the theatre screamed, but everyone else crapped because Satan and I looked so cute together. Satan and I started to walk outside. ZOMG, how did you do that? Voldemort asked in a turned on voice. I'm a vampire, I said as we walked into the car. Seriously? He gasped. Yeah, seriously, I said, drinking some beer. Satan started to drive the car. I smelled happily. Too bad we didn't get to see the rest of the movie, don't you think? Yeah, I said as we kissed pass passively. Satan started to par parked in the black driveway next to the place where Draco and I had watched GC for the first time. We went inside where Marilyn Manson was playing and started to mosh. Anti people, now you've got gone too far. Juice Christ Superstar screamed Marlin on the stage. We all did the devil fingers. I started to dance really close to Satan. He was so schmexy. He, t he looked at, uh, at me with all emo in his gothic red eyes and looked exactly like Mikey Way. I almost got in. Orgasm. Suddenly, Marilyn Mason stopped singing. I like wood too, peasant. Bla X black X tier X, he screamed. I ran on stage. Lucy and Samaro, Snap and Hades were there. They started to play their instalments. I got on stag. Well, you wanted honesty, that's all you had to say, I sang. I don't own the lyrics to that song. My voice sounded like a pentagram between Amy Lee and a girl version of Gerard Woy. Everyone clapped. Satan got an eructation. <laughs> I'm not okay, I sang finally. Suddenly, Lucian started to play this, the song by mistake. OMFG, yielded James. What the fuck? Whoops, I'm sorry, said Lucian. You fucking arsehole, James shouted angrily. You guys are such preps, Snap said. Come on, it was a mistake. Oh yeah, it's not his fault, says Sirius. No, he ruined the fucking song, yelled Samaro. You guys stop, I shoot out angrily, but it was too late. They all began to fight. Suddenly, Samaro took out his knife. 
OMFG no shouted Lucan. Sorry about that guys, I just got a phone call. Um now uh, where were we? You guys stop I show toad angrily, but it was too late. They all began to fight. Suddenly Samuro took out his knife. Oh MFG no shouted Lucan, but it was too late. James tried to shoot off his arm. And then I jumped sexily in front of the bullet. No yielded everyone, but it was too late, suddenly everything went black. Right, so they had a little bit of a mistake at the concert. And it led to a fight and Ebony was shot. I'd still like to know why have all these people got guns. Guns, for God's sake. Wizards use wands. They do not use guns. It's a muggle object. Bloody idiots. I'm still not quite used to character being called Samuro. That you know, it, it is stupid. Right, chapter thirty-nine. I am a trolling genius. Lols. Uh, no, no. If that isn't actually uh, admitting that this whole fic is a troll. I don't know. Disclaimer, I do not own the HP series. And I am not the real bloody wrist 666. Oh, the, it's this chapter then that's actually a... I did know about this. I did know about this, but it's been a long time. I assumed as it was chapter 40 something, but it's not. It's actually this chapter. This part is the one that's supposedly written by a hacker. Because back then when this, this fic was being written... It was actually put on fanfiction.net. So this here was the stage where her account actually got hacked and some hacker wrote some other chapters. So let's have a look at this. A.N. I am an extremely immature, pathetic idiot girl. I know. Out of boredom, I crack this girl's passy for fun. It took me late less than eight minutes to do it too and i'll probably get a shit in a shitload of trouble which i probably deserve because i'm being a troll right now yeah and i present to you my crappy part in this story and take note i haven't even finished reading this fic yet but instead skip over to skim chapter 38 flame laugh or do whatever you want preps i the american I, the American retail wearing British vampire who coughed up blood. Satan kneeled down beside me. No, don't die. I gave him a rueful smile. I'm sorry. It's something I had to do to fulfill my duty as a noble gothic Mary Sue. Satan sobbed. I love you, Ebony. I love you too. I'll see you in hell, I mumbled, already finding my surroundings fading to black. Bloody Mary Smith suddenly popped into the room for no apparent reason. She frowned when she realised the room was oddly quiet, but the sight of Ebony's lifeless body, she screamed. Her face became pale with horror. She screamed for the healers, Dumbledore, McGoogle and every single gothic person she could think of. Suddenly, a glow started to surround the body of Ebony. Everyone stared in shock. Her body started to lift ever so slowly, then to everyone's shock. It started to incinerate. When everyone realised what was happening, they rushed over to try to rescue the body, but it was too late. The Sioux became nothing more than a pile of ashes. A loud resounding of everyone bellowing, No! filled the room. A flash of white light from the ashes then started to bounce around the room. Everyone cowered in fear and were temporarily blinded. When it was over, things changed. All the silly goth clothes dropped from everyone's bodies. A.N. I will refuse to explain how the hell that happened. And in their place, clothes the characters would normally wear in canon appeared on their bodies. When everyone got over the shock of becoming free of the gothic power, everyone cheered. Everyone started singing, Ding dong, the Sioux is dead. Well, that is, until all the HP characters realised the true implications of becoming more like canon again. All the characters who were supposed to be dead fell to the floor, their bodies cold and lifeless. 
Harry and Voldemort started duelling. On the left side of the two, the battle of the light side and the dark side were reaching a climax. And because the replacement author also likes to screw around with Cameron, Draco and Hermione fled the scene and got married. Meanwhile, down in hell, Ebony shed a single tear because of her current situation. A situation that would live on for all eternity, or at least until the end of fanfiction time. She lost it all. She knew she had to remain strong. Nothing would ever break her down. She looked over her pale body and frowned. Where are my emo clothes? She asked herself in confusion. And then it occurred to her. For a shirt, she was wearing a bright pink polo with a seagull on the right or left, I can't remember, side. Below that, she was wearing a denim miniskirt with the destroyed look on it. Paired underneath that skirt were leggings with a little moose at the bottom. And then Ebony realised on her shoulder, she was carrying a pretty bag with an eagle on it that says, Live your life, written all over the bag. Ebony suppressed the urge to scream. Here, she was decked out in clothes, prepped to the extreme, and wearing stuff from Abercrombie and Filch, American Eagle, and Hollister. Panicked, Ebony hastily tried to take off the Hollister polo, but underneath it, there was another Hollister polo underneath. Ebony frowned and looked under the shirt. All she saw was a bra underneath. Dare I point out it's from Airy Line, available at American Eagle. Ebony tried to remove the shirt again, but to her frustration, there was yet another polo to replace it. This is unlogical and does not make any sense, Ebony bellowed out into the air. She failed to see the irony of her statement. How hypocritical her words were, seeing as she was practically calling the kettle black here. Ebony slit her wrist and mumbled to herself, Oh my God! End crap fic. A-N. Oh yeah, if you want to see the original content, this chick which I've planned for this chapter, I accessed it through the document manager thingy, which I copied and pasted it so you can read it here. A-N. Oh, well, before I, get, I actually get on to that... <laughs> I actually quite like that troll fix ending. I, I really do. I mean, that was the person who hacked. That that was awesome. It's kind of what you'd wish. But let's just see what actually was planned and what Ebony actually did right, because that, that was funny. <laughs> hey, Ian. STFU preps. Get a, a lift. You suck. Oh, and from now on, I'll be in vocation in England until like August, so I won't be able to update for a while. Lols. Thanks to everyone who reviewed. Expect the prepared who flamed. You fuck. MCL rules. I woke up in Donosi's office on a special gothic coffin. Hagrid was in the bed opposite me in a coma, like Vimpia and Draco had bet him up. Mr. Norris was cleaning the room. Oh my Satan, what happened? I screamed. Suddenly, Volksamort came. He looked less mean than usual. Get the fuck out, you bastard, I yielded. Thou hast not killed vampire yet, he said angrily. Suddenly, he started to cry tears of blood. I'll selective. Volksamort! OMFG, what's wrong? Suddenly, <laughs> Lucian, Professor Sinister and Sirius came. Bloody Mary and Vampire were with them. Everyone was holding black boxes. Volksamort disappeared. OMFG, Enemy, you're alive, screamed Vampire. I hugged him and Bloody Mary. What the fuck happened, I asked them. Oh my Satan, am I like dead now, I gasped. Enemy, you were almost shot, said Sirius, but the belly could not kill you since you were from another time. But thanks anyway, Lucian holding out his arm. I gasped, he had two arms. OMG, I can't believe Vampire Dad shot you, I gasped. Well, to be honest, Snap was possessed by Snap back then, said James. Yeah, he was probably a spy, said Sirius, sadly. He was really a death dealer. And he was such a fucking poser, said Lucian. He didn't even really know Hugh GC until I told him. Well, 
anyway everyone tarted to give me presents I was opening a black box with red 666 there was a DVD of Corpse Bride in it on it when I gasped Mr Norris looked up angrily because he hated goths hey has anyone fucking seen Grey Draco I asked gothically no Draco told me he would be watching a hose of wax said Professor Travelry because he doesn't know that you're better anyway the Norse said you could get up come on I got up suicidally Lucia and Sirius and Professor Sinister left I was wearing a black leather night gun under that I had a sexy black leather bra trimmed off with black lace with a matching thong that said gothic girl on the butt and sexy fishnets that kind of hooked on my, to my thong if you don't get the idea massage me and I'll tell you I put on a black fishnet top under a black MCR t-shirt a black leather mini with black lace and congress shoes I left the hospital's wings with Bloody Mary, Willow and Vampire Oh MFG let's celebrate gas Willow we can go to Hose of Wax with Jaco giggled Vampire let's go listen to GC and cut ourselves 666 said Hermione we opened the common room door sexily and then I gasped Draco was there doing it with snap he was wearing a black t-shirt with 666 on the front and baggy jeans you fucking prep we all yielded angrily you betrayed us shooted vampire angrily and he took out his black gun no you don't understand screams Draco sadly as he took his thingy out of snakes no you fucking suck you preppy bastard said Willow trying to attack him you rock girl I ran suicidally to my room and uh, I sexually took a stake out. Enemy no! screamed Jaco. But it was too late. I had slit my wrists with it. Suddenly everything went black again. Oh my god. Now she's using a stake to slit her wrists again. Uh, where did she buy that from? Tesco's? <laughs> seriously and just no not none of this it's just getting more and more random and is making like less and less sense I definitely prefer the ending that the hacker provided oh well let's carry on the drain wreck sincerely and an non author who will silently not reveal her identity because she's a coward aka drust a troll with rocks for brains chapter 40 lol someone has taken my account over the idiot's note well this was in the dark area might as well let the whole world see what the real Tara wanted to show us have a nice day hey and stfu preps get a life you suck oh from now on I'll be on vocation in England till like August so I won't be able to update for a while thanks to everyone who reviewed expect the preps he flamed it fuck you MCR rules 666 I woke up in the no nurse's office on a special gothic coffin Hagrid was in the bed opposite me in a comma because Vampire and Draco had better and gone chapter 40 is exactly the same then as chapter 39 let's just skip forward a, a little bit yeah that's a copy and paste job okay okay let's see uh, let's just tie this episode up I can uh, carry on the next episode with chapter 41 um, yeah very very strange why somebody had actually put the same chapter twice oh well makes as much sense as the rest of the fic